Hey, how's it going, guys? Super Duper Productions here with another video. Uh, yeah, you know, we out here, we do more mods. We are doing it big out here, right? But uh, today, we're gonna be installing a BMS heat exchanger for the Infinity Q50, as you can see right here. Oh, wait, hold on, we're getting a call real quick. Oh, dang, I, I heard the boost is calling. What's happening? What's up? Uh, so yeah, as you guys know it, we're gonna install this heat exchanger. Boost is already calling my name. Uh, as soon as this is done, we're gonna go get it tuned. And we're probably gonna go to a local tuner here, so stay tuned for that. Um, as you can see, this is a BMS heat exchanger. It's the 299 edition. Um, there's two of them, there's an elite and then a regular. This is the regular one. I've heard they're exactly the same, just that the 429 version is made in the USA, and this one's made in China, I believe. But here it is. Already kind of unboxed it the other day, so look at it. But dang, this is a big difference. From what I've seen in pictures, the stock one is like, probably like half of this, and like half the size, it seems like. And this thing just looks beautiful. But um, yeah, I mean, if you guys are looking for a heat exchanger, I think this is like one of the most uh, budget friendly ones and I've heard they run really good. So yeah, without further ado, uh, let's get started. First thing you gotta do basically is remove the front bumper. So in order to do that, there's a bolt back here, these clips, and there's bolts behind here. And I would probably recommend jacking up the car, so that's probably what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna jack up the car, put it on jack stands, and yeah, that's about it for now. And I'm kind of debating on removing this piece right here, because I, I don't know if you can see the heat exchanger from here, but you might be able to, I don't know. I guess I'll look into that once we get back there. But yeah, let's get this front bumper off. All right, so we got this panel off right here. Uh, it's just a lot of little pop-out tabs. There's some bolts that go behind right there. Oh, you can't see it, but I mean fudge. <laughs> uh, there's some bolt there that you're for the bumper that goes behind here. So you just lift this panel up. There's a bolt, a 10 millimeter bolt. And then you're gonna take this little tab off right here on the back of this fender liner. And so you can access the bolts that hold on the bumper right here. And then the bumper should come off. I think there's probably like a connector or two for the fog lights probably. And if you have the premium models, you have like bumper sensors, but I don't. So I have the Lux. So I don't have that problem for those connectors. So, uh... all right, Jesse, get to work. I'm just gonna keep saying I did it and then you did it. Before, you need to then put all these bolts here. Oh yeah, yeah, and then take the under tray off. And then the 300 bolts that comes with for your very sturdy plastic tray. Thanks, Infinity. Just kidding. Uh, all right, let's get this off. All right, so Jesse just got the bumper off. You're, uh, it's kind of complicated. It's probably gonna be the hardest part of the install. It's a lot of work. You, yeah, uh, so when you guys are removing all the bolts, oh, we didn't even tell him which bolts yet, huh? Yeah. All right, so there's a bolt right here. There's a whole bunch you gotta do underneath here. There's three right here, one, two, three. And as you guys have to remove the under tray, like we said, there's one that goes right here. There's one 10 mil on each side. These brackets kind of like came off as the bumper came off. Um, there's also another 10 mil this side. 
There's two connectors you gotta remove, one for the fog light and the other one for something else. I don't know what it's for. And there's like a little, this little clamp here that holds the connector in. You gotta, I just cut it off with, with some, uh, with some uh, cutters. And I'll probably put a new zip tie in there once I go to install it. Um, and when you're removing it, you're gonna like, you're gonna pry these, oh, the, these top pieces open first. And then you're kind of just gonna like pry the whole bumper out, outwards. But just don't, don't go too crazy because you know, obviously you don't want to break it. I'm sure those bumpers aren't cheap. But there it is, it's off. Um, now we're gonna get, go ahead and get started on the whole heat exchanger. And as you can see, this is the OEM heat exchanger. It's a very big difference. Look how thin this is. It's like super thin. And it looks really flimsy, honestly. It looks small too. But um, but yeah. This Any nice. tips? <laughs> nice. Get to it. You gotta have uh, two helpers, it helps. Especially if you dig. <laughs> but, uh, alright, let's keep going on this. Alright, uh, the next step I, uh, I saw in the instructions is remove this crash beam here. So, these four bolts here. And probably move these plastic things out of the way or take them off. I guess we'll see once we get there. I think they just come off once we put the heat, the crash beam off. So next step, take the crash beam off and we'll get back to you. All right, so we got a little ahead of ourselves, but we got the crash beam off, which is four 12 millimeter bolts, well, two bolts, two nuts on each side. You pull that out and then you disconnect the hoses, which is just two clamps on the heat exchanger and a little bit of cooling comes out. So make sure you have a tray. We spilled some. Because we're professionals. Um, and then all it's going to be is two 10 millimeter bolts. Or one 10 mil, I guess, on this side. Or it isn't even a bolt. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. One 10 mil on that side and two on this side. And then you should be able to just snake it out of here. From what I saw in the instructions. Totally not looking at other YouTubers. If it ain't the right way, it's the super duper way. You're... <laughs> Alright, so let's get this off. Alright, so as you can see, first thing we're going to do is... I mean, you can, you can be over here, guys. Don't be shy. Okay, okay. Uh, kind of hold it in place. I can throw the bullet. Or eat the little bullet. You guys can see the hardware it came with. So it's the bolt, washer, um, lock washer, washer, and nut. I don't know if that's the right way, but it's the way I'm gonna do it. And it's the longer bolts, because there's some smaller bolts. Well, the longer bolts are the ones I'm using. I don't know if the other ones for you, the oil cooler. If you guys have another cooler, which I don't, you guys can check on that. And let everybody else know in the comment section below. <laughs> I ain't letting y'all know. <laughs> I'm a YouTuber, do you think that? Clamp on first. And now you're gonna use these. I don't know why you don't reuse the old ones, but that's what the instruction said, so that's what I'm gonna do. And this one, to me, it seems like the instructions aren't very clear, but I think if you, you take these off. What about? Uh, If you guys haven't already noticed, we're not professionals. So. Kids with dreams. Yeah. Do this at your own risk. If I break your car, I'm sorry. 
So that way, it's not like snagging on it. That way, it does, it's not like a kink again. It didn't say that in the instructions, but I'm pretty sure that's what you do. Yeah, Alright, so as you guys can see, um this clamp is tying down, upper clamp is tying down. I'm gonna zip put a zip tie there just so it's a little more sturdy. And Bottom bolts are in, as you guys can see, top bolts. And that should be it about for the heat exchanger. Um, well, I think we're gonna put up the bumper and everything back on and fill it with some coolant. Check for leaks, and this should be about it. And uh, so it looks a little more sporty. I think if I remove the bottom grill, It'll expose a little bit of the intercooler, so it might, it might look a little mean. Sheesh, it kind of like looks mean already with the intercooler right there. It looks way better than the stock one, but. I've been on break on for 30 minutes. Bro. For real, bro, look. I paid this dude in Oreos and look. He already took a break. Yeah, bro, what do you do, a union job? Don't clock back in, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Uh, Let's, time, let's do a little time lapse right here real quick. Put everything back together and then we're gonna go do some pulls. Wow. All right, so there it is guys. We got everything on, crash beams on, the foam reinforcement. Uh, we just bled the cooling system. So what I usually do to bleed cooling systems is I take both caps off, I fill them up all the way to the top, and then you turn on the car and then you keep filling them, fill them up, filling them up as needed. So, and you make sure the car warms up all the way to operating temp. And honestly, I let, I let it go all the way to operating temp and probably like even 15 minutes after that, just so all the bu bubbles are just like sitting there bleeding itself out. And it is gonna be dripping out. I mean, it's just the way it is if you do it this way. I know the proper way is to do it with the pressure bleeder, but I don't have that. So this is what I did. So if you guys don't have a pressure bleeder, this is the way I did it. it. Seems like the car warmed up fine. No, it didn't overheat at all. The fans kicked on already, so the thermostat ran through. No leaks on my intercooler at all, or the heat exchanger, my bad, not the cooler. But there it is. Yeah, that's extra from when it was leaking over uh, from the overflow up there. Um, what we did is we removed this the bottom grill piece so it's gonna leave that exposed so that way when we go to put the bumper on it's gonna show that it's gonna show that I have it's gonna show the intercooler or the heat exchanger my bad here Jesse will throw on the bumper real quick just to show you guys it's not in all the way yet but just to give you guys an idea but this is what it kind of should look like when it's on the road I think Having that bottom grill off will make it look way aggressive, way more aggressive. Obviously, I guess you're not having more, it's not really a sleeper look anymore, but I'd rather have this look. I think it looks amazing right there. Sheesh, look at that. Dude, it looks so good. But uh, shout out to the boy Jesse for always coming through and helping out. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get all the bolts back in. All the 10 mils that, uh. We don't know where they go, but hey, we're gonna throw them on. So uh, let's keep going. All right, so the bumper's basically on, looking clean. Jesse's putting in the last bolts. So make sure he put these bolts with that plastic bracket underneath. Uh, a bolt behind here with that other bracket. The uh, one bolt on each side, like over right here. 
Uh, and obviously all the bolts for the under tray. I'm not gonna show the under tray. I mean, it's pretty simple. Just throw it in and <clears throat> just throw it in and <laughs> and uh, put all the bolts in because I'm gonna give it a nice clean under the under the engine because it was leaking previously. But Infinity fixed it. They just didn't wipe it down. But it's I mean that's not their job. I'm um, just gonna put this, put the plastic tray back on, go on a test drive and. Should be about it. Um, like um, next video for the Q50 is gonna be getting tuned, so stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for the tune. But uh, all right, we're gonna finish this up and go on a few pulls, and then close out the video. So I'll see you in a bit. So there it is, guys. All installed. Bumper on. You can kind of see the intercooler there. It looks so mean. Now all we got to do is go give it a few test drives. I don't. It's not going to change the car really until. That's just more for cooling once you raise the boost up. But let's go do it. Give a few pulls for the video, because why not? So uh, let's go do some pulls, bro. <laughs> 